This video is going to cover how to program basic GDI plus type two-dimensional graphics using Windows Forms in C Sharp. Um, the idea here is that we are going to use double buffering to try and make the graphics perform as smoothly as possible. So double buffering is the technique where we do all of our work to an off-screen um, surface and then quickly co copy the off-screen uh, work surface onto the visible display surface. Uh, this is usually provides the best performance in terms of the screen looking like a smooth animation and doesn't appear jittery or partially drawn and things like that. Uh, this is a fairly simple technique used in a wide variety of graphics applications. So in our case, we're going to learn how to implement this double buffer using the, the basic drawing functionality uh, of Microsoft Windows.net um, hierarchy uh, using the GDI plus set of routines. And what we're going to do is there are two that are very important to us. There are uh, objects known as graphics objects and there are objects that are bitmaps. So um, graphics objects, uh, this object implements all of the um, methods used and properties used to do the, to do the drawing. So this is a, uh, things like you could draw ellipses, you can draw filled uh, rectangles, you can draw lines, you can move uh, portions of an image, you can copy uh, bitmap images onto a dra dra drawing surface. The graphics object has all of the capabilities that you need to uh, draw onto something. And the bitmap is, you can think of as just a graphics storage location. Uh, this effectively is a big chunk of memory that is being interpreted as a visual image. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, um, create a form. So if I were to just uh, think of this as, I'll draw a form here real quick. So this is my on-screen form. And uh, I can, this is a Windows form that appears, and I can grab from that Windows form, I can derive a graphics object that's based off of the surface of the form here. So I can get that that form um, by and create a graphics from it. That's going to be my on-screen graphics that I'm going to copy to. What I also want to do then is I want to create another off-screen location that is of exactly the same size. And so this is going to be my off-screen uh, buffer. And we're going to create that as a bitmap. And that bitmap is going to be the same um, dimension, the same uh, size as our on-screen um, thing. And then what happens is when I want to do, I, I would make another graphic surface that is the size of this bitmap. And so we're going to call the graphics that is associated with um, the main form, uh, we're going to call that G. And we're going to call this one over here graphics G2. So G2 will be associated with the off-screen uh, buffer, and G will be the on-screen buffer. So the, really, the only thing we will ever do to the graphics G is clear it or copy from the bitmap. And what we'll do with G2 is all of our drawing that's associated with our uh, with our simple graphics programs that we're going to be creating. So think of it this way, is always work in G2, and then anytime you want a frame to appear, a finished frame to appear on our main display, we then copy from G2 to G. So let's go ahead and see how to implement that in a Windows form. So here I have a basic Windows form with a button associated with it. And I have, so if we pop over here to the code behind, you'll see that we're using drawing uh, and um, that is going to allow us to get graphics uh, associated with our objects, with our forms. So 
here I create my graphics G. This is the one that's going to be our on-screen uh, graphic surface. This is associated with the um, with the form, and we're going to create G2. This is going to be the off-screen graphics surface that's associated with the memory or the bitmap stored in memory. Only reason we're using a bitmap is because it's a convenient way to form that chunk of memory that we're going to need. So this bitmap is the memory storage for the off-screen buffer and it's going to be used to derive the G2 uh, graphics surface. I'm storing those as global variables here within the class um, form one so that I can uh, so I can access them from within the different methods. So here we see that on form load, when the form first loads, I want to go ahead and initiate those graphics objects. So they're available the whole time that my program is running. Here, I do G equals this. This, in this case, is going to refer to form one. So I am creating a graph using the using the create graphics method of a form. So this takes the entire surface of the form and associates a graphic object with it and returns it back to G. So this forms my on-screen um, uh, graphics object G. And then I call the method for G to clear. So in this case, I'm going to pass a system color. In this case, I'm going to clear it to black. And then I have to create that off-screen bitmap. So I make a new bitmap and I pass it the constructor information for the bitmap is how big do I want to make it in terms of pixels? Well, this dot width and this dot height will inherit the height and width of the form that I'm currently on. So this makes my off-screen bitmap exactly the same size as my current form. And I can't do any writing or drawing or anything to a bitmap. All I can do is display it or copy from it. So I need to associate the G2 graphics object with that bitmap. So that's what this line does. And I use the, the function or the method available in the graphics object to derive a graphics from an image. So this creates the G2 um, drawing surface associated with my off-screen buffer BM. Now, in my particular program, uh, I went ahead and I created this timer. This timer is just going to tick once every 200 milliseconds, and it's going to draw a little circle on the screen. So once we start our button, it'll clear the screen and start putting little stars on it. So we'll go ahead and see how that drawing gets done. So my button click here, all I'm going to do is enable my timer. I'm going to clear my screen to blank, and I want to draw my first frame onto the, uh, onto the main screen. So I'm going to call the G dot draw. So this is drawing on the visible surface G and then draw image is draw image is going to read from a bitmap and the format of this is the bitmap the source bitmap you want to go from and the source location within that bitmap. Uh, we'll talk more about that at a future time that's very handy to um, use sprites for example you can subdivide a portion of a bitmap and copy in only some section of it uh, but here we want to copy the entire whatever stored in the bitmap onto the g surface a couple other methods that you should implement in windows you should always implement your form one dot paint or form one underline paint this paint event gets generated whenever a portion of your screen needs to be redrawn in our case it's simple all we do is we take whatever we have in our off-screen buffer and put it back on the main screen. So if we resize our thing or drag in the, uh, another window over top of it, we will just redraw our, um, our current frame. Then in our case, we're going to be using this timer tick as so effectively like a game loop. If you think of it making a, a, a graphics game, uh, we're just going to randomly associate a dot on the screen. So I'm going to draw on the off-screen surface. I use the draw ellipse function of the um, of the graphics capabilities. 
Here I am doing. Um, so draw ellipse expects a color that it wants to draw with, and then an X and a Y location, and then a width. So we're going to draw a two pixel radius or diameter uh, circle at some random number on the screen. If I did not draw, if I did not do the G dot draw image, if I did not copy that in, I would not see anything appear on the screen. I would see dots, dots would be being written to my off screen buffer. But every time we're done, we want to draw that image onto the screen. So if we see how this executes, you'll see that if I initiate this, the screen turns black and I start to get these little tiny white dots that may not show up quite as well in the video. Um, every time I hit the button, it just reinitiates it, clears it, and starts it over again. So you can see how that is operating. This is the basics of any graphics program that you want to write in the using the GDI system. You do not have to grab the entire surface of your screen if you wanted to make for example, just a window on, on, your, on your form, you can grab a much smaller portion and form a graphics function there and draw only on that. Um, but uh, in the case of making uh, screen sized games, etc., cetera, uh, you can uh, grab the entire surface. Uh, I hope that's helpful on seeing how to initialize a GDI plus graphics um, surface in a double buffered manner.